Audio Frontier. Welcome to Rangers Daft. We're recording this on a Tuesday afternoon where we've just heard the sad news that Walter Smith has passed away. Um, when it come to two guys who, one who's just been down to Ibrox, dropping off scarves and flowers. Two guys who Walter Smith was Rangers to. It's Gregor and Stephen. How, how you doing, guys? Had better, better days, Steve. John. Had better days. Stephen, you've just come back from Ibrox after going down to pay your tribute there. What was it like down there? Uh, surreal. Uh, yeah. It was just, it's obviously I was down there about 11 o'clock. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get, it'll be even more there. I don't even know what I'm saying, man. I feel dead. I don't know. It's, it was... It's hard. Aye, it was just really surreal. Just going there and people talking about actually hearing the words about Walter dying and it's just, aye, it's, it's a horrible, horrible, horrible day. Yeah. Great. Where, where did you hear the news and when did you hear? Oh, I mean, I just, I came, I finished my bre- the breakfast show and the guy that comes in today, the news, Joe, um, I had just left the room and he's breaking news. I mean, he, he must have got it right away, like right away, because I'm making... And he got sad to tell you the news of a legend. And then when he said Walter Smith, I'm, I just was like, you're joking. I mean, we all know that he'd, he'd been unwell. And uh, we saw that picture of him at the at the golf course a couple of weeks ago. And That's I mean, the picture that sticks in my head. Seeing him mm. like that, he looked Walter well, had a bit of a, you know, your cell grade, oh man, meeting him, he was a bit... Surprisingly, quite a big guy, like big shoulders and quite yeah. a presence, remember, a big manly uh, presence. But seeing him standing next to Fergie, and he, he just, he, he just didn't look, he didn't look like Walter, man. He didn't. And he? that's just it's that disease, man. It's mm-hmm. we all know everybody's, everybody knows somebody that's been affected. But so me and Bob have been texting each other back and forth, and I'm like, "How are you feeling?" And he's devastated, and I'm devastated, and I'm, I'm really, it's been a tough, tough morning. Mm-hmm. Um, because this is a guy that every Rangers fan was a debt to. Because when you think growing up, he was the, the manager when I was growing up. When I first went to Ibrox, he brought us so many memories. Scotland manager came back to Rangers, winning the league titles, winning the trophies, going to Europe. And for me, that guy as Rangers, he is Mister Rangers. Mm-hmm. And not only that, you can hear. I mean, I was listening to to stuff in the way him and everybody coming on and talking about him. I've just saw James McFadden standing outside. Oh, Ibrox. that was I. So, so many, everybody's got great words to say. So Alex Ferguson, um, you know, you'll, you'll now find the, the articles about Walter Smith helping Ronaldo when he was at United I read that. Yeah, for a couple yeah. of months. Um, yeah. Everybody's just coming to, to basically say how much a well-respected man he was. Mm-hmm. Um, he just personifies everything about being a Rangers man and being a Rangers supporter. It's, it's a horrible day. Stephen, what, what did he mean to you as a Rangers supporter? <laughs> like Gredo said, it's... I think back to my favourite memories as a kid, as a wee boy, as an adult, teenager, and every one of the memories Walter Smith brought to me. Walter Smith brought to me what the the amazing run in Europe in 92. Yeah. Amazing run with Gaza getting eight in a row. Him coming back, Tana Dice, league titles, rugby park league titles, Manchester. Every one of the memories, Walter Smith was at the wheel, man. He was the one taking the club to these places and just bringing you these memories that will stick stick in your head and live with you to the day you die. And right. he is just, he's... I read something on Twitter, I don't know who it was, man. I just, I hope, I mean, it doesn't really matter now. I mean, it's like, well, it does matter, but it doesn't really, it's, I do think there should be more run about Ibrox for Walter. Do you know what I mean? I don't think there's enough things there that show what the legend is. I mean, you see the John Gregg statue, you know, I just hope now, like, there is some that yeah. we can, that there's got to be this, this guy. It's always the same, like James McFadden said, that everybody's a legend, everybody's a snack. That word's used all the time, but, Walter Smith 
I don't even know. I, I don't know the word to use for Walter Smith because yeah. what that guy done, the state we were in when he came back the second time, the first time taking the off of somebody like Graham Soonis and guiding the team through and then taking there when he came back when after the Le Guin fiasco and then what he done. It's like Roy the Rovers was McCoy stone the pitch, but I think Walter Smith was, do you know what I mean? He was honestly just uh, everything it means to be Rangers, man. Aye. And then you... And when you say that, Bob, like the memories, but I, it's weird because when I'm listening to stuff on the way home, it got me thinking about like just how it, it brings you and your pals together. I, I just started thinking about like eating a row when I was a wee boy and like cuddling mm-hmm. my dad mm-hmm. when we beat Aberdeen and it all mm-hmm. kind of tracks back, it all kind of follows back to, to Walter. Aye, aye, it does. I mean, like, God, man, that famous photo I'm storing holding the, holding the trophy, man, at Tannadice when we get nine in a row. Do you know what I mean? That one, and then you see when he came back, and it's I think it was after we'd won it at Rugby Park, and he's walking around the pitch in the pissing rain, remember? Mm-hmm. He's clapping the state, clapping all the fans, and, like, there's so many, Pouring man. Pouring that rain, wasn't it, man? Aye, aye, there's just there's, there's so many, and it's like, I don't know, man, it's just... And even, Bob, even when, remember a couple of months ago, it was like Soonis and Walter and aye. Stephen Gerrard were on Rangers TV. You were Maybe watching it going... gaff that's kicking about the theorem, huh? Aye, aye. But you're watching that going, what? Oh. Like, I remember aye. at the time just being like, that is the most Rangers. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, aye, 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 aye. Just... And then McCoy's talking on talk sport this morning as well, and he's like... I mean, he found out about it, I take it, when aye. he was just coming off air and... Jim Aye. White was saying basically, look, he gave himself five minutes and then come back on and he's tribute to him. Simon Jordan was talking about it. It was just, a, it was spot on. You're it forgetting, was. like, we're all, like, we all saying, right, right, we've, I mean, you, we've, we've met Walter, we've, we've been fans of Rangers for our wee boys, but to somebody like Alan McCoy, this is going to be, this is a big, big, I mean, as he said, he went from being his gaffer to being, uh, like, his second dad best, to being his, to be his best, best, best pal. Best pal. I mean, he's obviously leaves legacy throughout the club. You guy, you just mentioned there, Grado, you, you were lucky enough to, to meet the man, you know, from an outsider, you know, for me, you name legends of the Scottish game. You talk Ferguson, you talk Steen, Walter Smith comes into that exact sentence as well, because he is absolute legend of the Scottish game. You guys lucky enough to meet him. What was he like as a person? And talk us through that experience of meeting him. Well, again, like Bob says, he had a mega presence. He was like a giant. You know, he, he, he was somebody that, well, for example, that me and Bob, we're going about all the time, right? But it was the best day of our lives. It was the best day of our lives, right? It was the best day of our lives. Let's be honest. And everything about that day, as I've said before, just for being in the dressing room when Walter came in with Ali and everybody put their phones away and everybody, sh- 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 for him to talk and just that, and just to have the experience of being in that Rangers changing room Aye. to listen to him give the team talk and then and then obviously during the game well should I say before the game I've told it before but it was like it's like a, it was like a, where do you play <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going well um well I can I, I mean I'm, I'm not bad up front he's can you, I'm, well, up front I can play right midfield he goes listen you play whatever the fuck I tell you to play <laughs> <laughs> but then I but then I says to him, look, then I can I say to him, I says, look. Cause I've done when I done any charity games, I was always brought on the last 30 seconds. I was kind of saying, please don't bring me on. <laughs> so like, don't bring me on, don't bring me on. And I think the first half, the team that you are playing in, Bob, did we use no one in about three now or something within like the first aye, aye. I think aye. it finished it finished seven three, I think. Aye. Well, in the first <clears> half, he's like, right, you get stripped. And I'm going, please don't put me on. <laughs> please don't put me on. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 I actually didn't think he would put me on until like the 89th, 90th minute, but he brought me on in like the 69th, 70th minute. He was like, right, you're going on. And the nerves, honestly, but he, I mean, as well as that, we, I met him at golf days as well, met his wife, Ethel. She was rather city daft. She was an abs, she's an absolute sweetheart, man. Absolute sweetheart. Aye. And I mean, I remember, and this is just coming into my head, but just now that I've got these memories, it's amazing to think like we... I spent a night, um, it was me, Murdo McLeod, Walter, Ethel, um, Mary, Murdo's wife, and just talking away and blethering and him going like that. Hey, right, Monu, going to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Starting the bar. And I'm going, I'll get this, Walter. He's going, no, I'll get this. And I'm going, all right, okay, no bother. And then 
sat and he was telling his stories and then he got on the piano I know he was playing away in the piano in the middle of the night just having a good time and memories like that I will right. never ever forget man we'll never, but the best thing the best thing that I, I mean every time I get a wee drink me I'm sitting with Stephanie I'll always go back to that charity game where he's getting the pre-match interview and he's talking Alan McCoy has gone oh there's a couple of, you know we've had players you know they've put on a wee bit weight and they've not played for years we've got Thomas Buffalo that's playing on Thursday night you know some are a bit out of shape and then kind of water just kind of butts in gone but we've got Grad on our team Grad we always <laughs> <coach. I, I, laughs> we've got Grad on our team and see just that wee clip man honestly I love that so much Um, but that's just like yeah. we've we've been lucky enough to to be, you know, and that guy's um, company. Company, man. Stephen, did you did you not have it. an awkward encounter involving a, a samosa in speaking to Walter Smith? Is that uh, right? There was, aye, uh, there was. That was. The, I'm literally just off the phone to my brother because that was the last time I seen him in a director's box. It was the, I think it was the Hibs game. I think we won two one. I also remember Haji came off the bench and. Uh, well, I was there with Ethel, and as Gado says, she's absolutely never sitting daft, man. She loves it. So, we were in the director's box, and Gado knows what it's like. There's always a wee buffet on, and you go up and you get a plate. And instead of picking up man bread, I picked up a couple of poppadoms to go with my, my Indian food that I put on my plate, and my brother in law's top stone there. So, he's there, I'm here. Walter and Ethel are right in front of us. Ethel's going on about River City, this and that, this and that. I'm having a joke with Walter about coming on the podcast. If he comes on the podcast, I'll give Ethel a tour of River City. Knowing she'd go, aye, he's coming on. She was going on. <laughs> but Walter's talking to me. I, I don't know what it is, man. I lose all knowledge of football when I'm talking to Walter, <laughs> right? <laughs> I like to think I can hold a conversation about football with anybody. But with Walter, I don't know what I'm saying. And I'm going, why am I talking about fucking formations and all that to Walter Smith? And... <laughs> While I'm doing it, I'm putting my chicken on my poppadom, but it's too heavy and too warm. Oh, and it's man. crushing, it's crushing my poppadom. So on the flare, the carpet of the body, <laughs> blue room in the director's box, there's just an absolute fucking mountain of crumbs underneath me. <laughs> and my brother, my brother was going like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. I, I don't, That's I mean, brilliant. I was like. I'm talking to you, Walter, my horns are like that, the poppadom spawn all down at my feet, uh, like, but one of the best ones was the same as with Grado, like, that charity match, like, me, because Grado, you go there, you were there because you were in the team, but I travelled there, there with Jordan and Gav, and me, Jordan and Gav walked in, and just as we walked in, what we were saying earlier, I think people don't realise, he was quite a big guy, Walter, man, so I'm storing, uh, talking to I can't remember who I was talking. I think it was, I think it was Michael Moles who stood in front of us. And then I just feel this horn on my shoulder. And it's like a mad, it's a grip. And I, I was like, this voice in my ear, I can't get to watch a telly on a Tuesday night because of you, you wee bastard. <laughs> 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 and I turns in, he's like, gave us a cuddle. And I'm like, all right, how are you doing? He's like, that way again, I kind of, I lost all power of speech and everything, man. Oh, it's yeah. like, it's like you just... You're just talking shit, aren't you? Aye, there's a wee, there's a wee person in your head going, you're going to fuck this up, you're going to fuck aye. this up. <laughs> and, 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 and rambling away and rambling away. Aye. Sure that, sure that, uh, that happened he was, he was, <laughs> he, he walked by me as well once, coming out, um, I broke after a game. <laughs> and he's like, how you doing, son? And uh, <laughs> he's kind of walked away, like, right, because he was with his grand and that. And he kind of walked like, um, five seconds in front of him, like, how's Ethel? <laughs> and everybody kind of stopped a lot and he just kind of looked at me and he's alright <laughs> if they say what <laughs> uh, we, we, we asked we asked on the, the Twitter oh. to, to if anyone had any stories that like you guys have had about Walter um, Craig got in touch says just after he left and Ali took over, I was about 13 going to Rangers versus Chelsea in a friendly and my auntie and uncle had got me hospitality tickets for my birthday as a new guy that ran hospitality suites, I was promised a private to the stadium, but for whatever reason, this never happened. Walter overheard Tim speaking about it and told him to go and find a strip. He signed it, brought it to me, cheered me right up. Can't really say much more, just goes to show the type of man he was. Um, Sean says, my dad used to be one of the cleaners there and would take me along as a way of uh, earning a bit of cash. I was too young for a job. Anyway, I took my mate this time as it was our only way to see the game. We had to go and hide to celebrate as we were in the home end. 
after the game we were told to clean the main stand and as a punishment for Rangers winning um, we were at the tunnel when Walter and Kenny Moore came out to do a post-match interview and we shouted down Walter, what a result, superb he looked us like a couple of tits when we realised we had our Aberdeen high-vis vests on so we, <laughs> <laughs> so we quickly unzipped and to show Rangers top was underneath he burst out laughing and said glad your boys got to enjoy the game now get back to work oh uh, brilliant and there's there's this this come in this is uh, done the rounds on Twitter and it's from a heart supporter it's from Gavin Wallace he said Walter Smith's last game and his first spell in charge of the Rangers was the ninety eight Scottish Cup final against Hearts Hearts one two one Walter Smith mm-hmm. he'd been absolutely gutted yeah his last game ever in charge of his bothered Rangers and he lost the cup final yet he stood and applauded every Hearts player lifting the trophy walked around to Parkhead applauding the Hearts fans celebrating as Jim Jeffries seeked him out to congratulate him sent uh, cases of champagne on he sent ca- uh, cases of champagne onto the Hearts bus for the trip home easy to remember being a great winner but there's the mark of a great loser an extremely humble and dignified man that's the mark of a proper winner a man that oozed absolute class oh, that's class that is and that's like what Ali said on Talksport as well. Like so much dignity in defeat. It's so mm-hmm. much, it was just class. It was class, and that's that's testament. A, a lot of people could learn a lot from Walter Smith, and beforehand <laughs> Tommy Burns as well. A lot of Aye. managers and a lot of people in the current game could learn a lot from Aye, these guys. Of course, of course. Um, tribute's obviously coming in from across the rain, across the football and the landscape. Everyone's paying tribute to Walter because he touched. You know, as you were saying the other week there about when Brian Loudrop was there, he could sort out when Brian Loudrop had his cancer, Stephen, he knew someone in America. You say, yeah. mm-hmm. you come to me, yeah. son. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Right yeah. across the football landscape, he touched Aye. everyone. Um, Alex, that wee we... story done the rounds, by the way, that you told. Aye. Uh, Aye. Bob. Yeah. It was, it's just the, it's the mark of the guy, though. I mean, it's, it doesn't even surprise me, man, because you just, everything you hear about him, it's like, like I say, I've, I've Ran out of words for him, man, honestly. Yeah. Uh, Alex McQuish said, Walter was a great mentor to me in my coaching career and someone I learned a great deal from, but more importantly, he was a great friend. I always looked forward to being in his company. A true legend of the football world on behalf of my family, we shall miss him dearly. Um, Kenny Dalgleish, me and my heartfelt sympathies are with Walter's wife, Ethel, and his boys. Though we were on opposing sides in the pitch, he was a real footballing friend of it. He was respected by all and one of the few tra- uh, able to transcend rivalries. Today, we've lost a truly great man, RIP. Uh, Douglas Park um, came out. It's almost impossible to encapsulate what Walter meant to every one of us at Rangers. He embodied everything that Rangers should be. His character and leadership was second to none. I will have long in the memory of everyone he worked with during his two terms as his first team manager. Celtic, one of the first ones to come out as well, uh, expressed deepest sympathies following the sad news that former Rangers and Scotland manager Walter Smith has passed away. Walter was a tremendous servant to Scottish football and everyone at Celtic FC sends our heartfelt condolences. Obviously, you know, for to- with Tommy Burns, he was a, a Paul Bearer at, at Tommy Burns' funeral. You know, again, it just shows the respect both clubs have had when it comes to matters like this. Uh, and then finally, it's the final word to, to the current manager, Stephen Gerrard. Thank you for all your wisdom, support and friendship. You meant the world to everyone at Rangers and you'll be sorely missed. Thoughts with Ethel and all of the Smith family at this time. Rest in peace, Walter. Um, tributes right across the football and world. Like I say, Alan, I've seen Alan Shearer, Gary Onikar, everyone. Because um, he, he he's up, like you say, we 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 speak Ferguson, we speak Steen, we speak Smith, because they're all should be mentioned in the same sentence. It's a sad, sad day, man. It's a sad, sad day, but um, it is bringing a bit of comfort hearing all these these stories, and you just you, you realize how much an effect he had on these players that you forget or you think. God, how did how did that like how did that one come about and hearing the wee stories everybody's aye. coming out aye. and uh aye, and, it's and, like even that story on Ronaldo, mate, like you're talking about like daft things like that, you just no daft things like that. I mean like aye. random things like that you didn't think would even you didn't think somebody like the player like Ronaldo and Walter Smith not taking it away for Walter Smith. I mean like you wouldn't think they would be mentioned aye. in the same do you know what I mean? The same sentence, man, but oh, I don't know. I don't know what else to say, man. I mean, the the, the video of Gerard Aye, just TV, Aye. man, that gets you. That Aye, really, you see that, John? Yeah. yeah. Lumping your throat material, man. I mean, it, it just shows you that, I mean, you don't know how often that Walter would get in and, you know, game advice. And it's amazing to think that. I always loved thinking about that. Like, 
Aye, you, I think if you, you could, turn into Walter and gone right, what's the crack here, man? What would you do in this position? Then like, uh, you could tell Gerard leaned on Marty quite a lot. Mm-hmm. And even do you know what? I'll tell you what came for his due. Um, Warburton was on, I know, on talk sport. Did you hear him? No, I've not heard he, that. He mate, was I talking about him now and going, I, 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 a great pal. And anytime he was looking for advice, he would always be willing to get. Brilliant, man. Brilliant. I say his, his legacy, I think, will remain at the club. For oh, right. even says I think you know going forward whether it's a a statue whether there's it's got to be there's got to be the but this Ed, Edmiston House man there's got to be whether, whether it's Walter Smith you know absolutely, absolutely. the Walter Smith stand as well man when you've got do you know what I mean there's got to be something like something there <clears throat> yeah absolutely well listen I mean I, obviously I'm not a Rangers supporter but I know what it means t- to you guys on this day. I mean, we could sit here, we could talk about the Bronby game, we could talk about the St Mirren game, but it just, it doesn't feel right on a day like this. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I think, you know, it's a short Rangers staff this week, but I think what we'll do is we'll leave you with a tribute that Rangers put up on their um, Twitter feed and we'll just say, I guess, thank you, Walter, for everything. Yep. The best. Simply the best, mm-hmm. Walter Smith. season's time we can look back and say that this is one of the best seasons that the club's had and obviously we're delighted to be involved in it. That's McCoy East with the acrobatic effort. McCoy East does it for Rangers. And here's a break on for Loudrum. Showing tremendous pace. He's past the goalkeeper. That's a sensational goal.
big decision to uh, to change and come back. And to be quite honest, if I wouldn't have done it for any other club. The goalkeeper's hesitated. The flag stays down. Smith, Rangers! 